So I've got a bit of a treat for the Volkswagen subscribers. I know I haven't made any videos in the last year or so. And uh, just to the people that have sent messages and emails asking if everything was okay. Um, yeah, thanks for your concern guys. It is okay. Do still have uh, my Subi bug. Um, life's just had a lot going on at the moment. But... Um, Today I have a uh, yellow canary sitting in the garage here with a very sick generator on it. Um, so I could just go ahead and dissect the generator, find out what's wrong with it, uh, why it isn't charging enough. Um, quite possibly it's just worn out brushes, but as you can probably tell, Originality is uh, not a consideration with this car. Um, so the logical step is to replace it with a new alternator because um, they are far more efficient at charging than the old generators. And the time and money I would waste refurbishing an old uh, generator um, just isn't worth my time, so it's easier to put a generator in. So this is a job which can be done without dropping the engine. Um, to get the generator out, comes out complete with the fan. And there's just four mounting bolts in each corner, but that's basically the only one you can access easily. The others which are all buried behind, especially with a single carby. Um, means lifting the shroud, so to do that involves taking the deck lid off, remove the two hinge brackets and lift the shroud high enough to um, access those bolts and then remove the whole assembly. And uh, unfortunately on an engine that was a factory generator like this one, the stand also needs replacing which is why I have a new one here. Unfortunately, chrome aftermarket, which is probably of questionable quality, but it'll fit right in on this engine. Many other things to fix, like a glass fuel filter bouncing on top of the spark plug leads. There's a fire waiting to happen. And that's a pancake air cleaner, but jobs for another day. Um, so, I'm going to tackle this by dropping the engine out because uh, it does make life a lot easier than pulling the deck lid off but the other reason is I also have to put a um, new clutch in this thing as well so engine has to come out anyway. Now the wiring for a generator to alternator conversion is where a lot of people come unstuck because it is very different between the two and I've seen a lot of mistakes made over the years. Um, the generator has, on 12 volt cars like this, a regulator mounted under the rear seat. So the wiring from the generator runs through to that. Um, whereas the vast majority of alternators, and typically all the replacement ones you buy these days, uh, are internally regulated, which means there's no external regulator and very simple to wire up. That there just goes to your battery and that's the warning light terminal. Nice and simple. Uh, and that's what Beatles had from about 70, late 75 onwards. But the earlier genera uh, alternators had external regulators. So if you've got a three pin one like that with the separate battery post, means there's a regulator under the seat. Now any car with a regular regulator under the seat will need bypassing. Um, so down in front. When changing to the two style like this, which just about every alternator conversion will do, um, is where a lot of people um, tend to screw up. Now this car's had a rewire before, so unfortunately they're not the factory colours. Typically the um, D plus wire is a big red one. This one's been swapped for black. 
and the field wire which is DF would normally be green so um, bear that in mind when I uh, connect all this up but basically all I'll be doing is uh, this black one will become the new B plus on the genera on the alternator rather and I'll be repurposing the field wire as a warning light wire so I'll have to swap the ring terminal on it for a spade terminal so this engine's ready to drop out now got all the uh, electrical disconnected um, including the reverse light wires which are incorrectly routed on this car I was quite shocked actually they um, it's been fed between that sharp firewall, chrome firewall and the tinware down there it's amazing it hasn't chopped it in half it's meant to run through a hole down the back this side with a rubber grommet anyway um, so electrical's done throttle cable disconnected uh, two heater cables, two heater hoses and the fuel line so that's just got the four bolts to undo but before I do that um, if you have a big chrome dress pulley nut like this car does that needs to come off before you drop the engine because by the time you get the engine out of the bell housing enough to clear the clutch uh, that pulley is going to get caught up on here so that needs to come out and I need to take the belt off anyway much easier when it's bolted into the car so when I undid that nut the whole pulley actually came off uh, being a cheap chrome aftermarket one it's not a tight fit on the shaft um, but that works out for me anyway because I uh, have to fit it to my new alternator anyway so that's all good so now with this engine out I've just got to lift the fan shroud to do that because this engine no longer has its thermostat flaps I've just got to undo the clamp around the generator which is this nut here the fan shroud at either end has a bolt through it um, and being a twin port engine I'm just going to have to remove this uh, oil cooler uh, ducting so once that bolt from in there is out this part just lifts on just got to undo that one there now and the other one I forgot about is the throttle cable tube we'll need removing okay clamp is loose bolts on the end are undone all the wires are off the coil that'll lift off now So now the fan needs to be separated from the old generator so it can be fitted on the new alternator and the fun part of that is getting that big 36mm nut undone. Now the way I've always done it is to put the back half of the pulley back on uh, if I can line it up with the keyway grip those two flats there in the vise like so and apply much elbow grease okay so that's cracked got our big nut off there's a square drive washer followed by the fan always check that it's not wallowed out like this one is a little bit not bad enough to warrant replacing that'll wiggle off and it's bringing the hub with it okay hub came off with it next we've got two 10 mil nuts here for the backing plate two 10 mil nuts off so the, the inner fan plate will lift off and our chrome one here off and ugly blue sawtooth wheel and there's one dead alternator ready for the bin all right time to start putting the new one back together so first just put the back pulley half onto the shaft see the keyways in place gotta line it up with the slot back half of the pulleys on holding it securely in the vise 
So, first one is generator clamp. Now, ugly dress up kit, most people wouldn't have that. Um, tin foil shaped <laughs> backing plate. Goes on like so, but I'll put that with the spark plug holder hole, which is that at the bottom. Retaining ring. Then fan backing plate. Now, very important, this slot here, which is not in any of the other sides, that must face down. Otherwise, your oil cooler will get no air. Uh, sorry, generator bearings. So, you can see, lined up with the bottom. If it was 180 degrees, to be lined up with the top. So, time to put the nuts and washers on. Backing plates clamped down. Last step is to engage the fan with the Woodruff key, but this is where the shims get involved. The, uh, there's meant to be shims between that surface and that surface, which sets the gap between the fan and the uh, backing plate. If it's too close, it'll rub on this. If it's too far, it will rub on the fan shroud. So I'm just going to have to suck it and see because there were no uh, shims installed in this one. A little bit of anti-seize on those threads before I put the fan nut back on. So that's uh, tightened down now. Doesn't seem to have any rubbing at this stage, but we'll know more when the motor's back in place. That's a pretty good air gap there. So bolt back up, it's uh, spinning nice and freely without hitting the shroud at this stage. So last step before I put the door back together is to fit the new alternator stand. Luckily this uh, aftermarket oil filter filler is just going to unscrew off but the original ones can be very tight and hard to remove. Mmm, sludgy. Lovely. I think I might give this a bit of a degrease before I put it back together. Well, that looks a bit better. Um, now, one of the things that people really muck up frequently is the orientation of this. Um, it's called an oil separator. Basically, what it's designed to do is separate the oil from the air. Um, you can see that it has top printed on it, but as to the orientation of it, I've seen a lot of people get it the wrong way around because it can fit any way on there you want. The correct orientation is to sit like that. The louvers facing down and open towards the right hand side of the car and the reason for that is the crank rotation going that way throws the oil up and out through the uh, the oil filler wherever it is and this just helps catch it so it only lets the air up through but not the oil so I've seen a lot of people the opposite happens when you put it in that way they act as scoops and the oil actually flings right up and drips out of the oil filler. So that's all bolted back together now. Uh, I've just tightened up the mounting strap on it. One thing I forgot to mention is I don't completely tighten down these nuts until I've got the shroud in place. This will wiggle a little bit, which and that just lets the, the stand find a happy medium, happy spot under the generator. If they're sitting off skew the shroud just won't sit down. I also had to remove the fuel pump to get it that uh, back nut there um, and this is a bit of a juggling act to get back into place with an alternator because it's so much bigger than the generator. It can be done but it's just a matter of um, not doing it one-handed and uh, there we go, just need to bolt that down now. Okay, engine's back in now with the new alternator fitted. 
got a new fan belt and all that's left to do now is bypass the old regulator and wire it up so starting with the earth that's a nice easy one just goes under the screw there now difficult because this car has been rewired in the wrong colours that would normally be the big red probably red and white one that goes to the generator positive D plus um, that will now go to the battery post on the alternator like that and I'll need to buy a protective rubber boot for that connection too and the old green field wire which unfortunately now is yellow in this car I have to cut that ring connector off and put a spade terminal on so it fits the warning light terminal and that will be this end sorted and there it is all wired up Got a earth under that screw our yellow aka green field wire connected to the warning light and our big black aka red which needs tightening up a bit more on the battery post and I will get a protective rubber boot for that because that bolt there is live all the time and unfused and if you bump it with a tool uh, it will likely weld to it because it's a big heavy wire straight to the battery so now all I've got to do is bypass the old regulator all right so I'll get rid of this bit of cardboard Amazed to see that's still there actually. Alrighty, so our two uh, I'll just light. Our two main power out are these two here. And uh, need to pull both of them off. This one here runs across to the battery positive, and uh, that one there runs up to the main power to the front of the car so I'll be pulling both of those off and I'll be joining them together and then obviously this car wasn't rewired properly because you can see the that's the black wire on the generator excuse you that's the black wire on the generator which is actually red and white at this end so it's been joined somewhere along the way so that will be removed from there and joined to these ones as well and there's our green field wire which is yellow at the generator end so that will be joined to my blue warning light wire so there's the old regulator uh, now defunct and removed so we've got uh, the wiring here you can see I've joined together the green field wire and the blue warning light wire together so that's the warning light taken care of I've connected that brown ground wire back to the earth screw there all that leaves is the main battery wires so a lot of different ways to uh, connect these and I've seen some pretty horrible ones people just twitching them all together and wrapping them in tape um, I prefer an OEM solution where I can which is why I've looked through my junk pile and found a factory junction block this is what 74 and later cars used so that will join those three wires together and protect them inside that housing I uh, just crimp new connectors on obviously because that one was a ring connector there's the old one there and those other ones were kind of breaking apart so I've replaced a lot of them they are the uh, 9.5 mil or 38 inch wider ones so there's that all installed got a nice factory uh, solution to the problem and just one final note uh, this grey wire this only applies to 72 and later cars which have the dealership diagnostic plug on the wall that was connected up with the uh, generator input wire it doesn't actually do anything it only goes to the plug on the firewall um, so it uh, can just be left unconnected I'll just tape that up 
even though it's not actually touching anything, but just better to be safe than sorry. That's what I like to see. So now with that cover off the generator, I can actually see the brushes and like I thought, they're just extremely worn. All that's happening is they're uh, that worn, the uh, spring can't put enough tension on it anymore, which is why it's not, not charging properly. So it could have been fixed with a pair of new brushes, but the commutator's getting a bit worn in there as well. So... The car's better off with an alternator anyway.